Give me just a couple seconds here. And pop out the chat so I can be checking on it with, when I can. And presto, I'm here. Welcome to everyone. I am right now getting ready to start the whole shebang. What a shock! Whoa. One of the house panthers decided to swing by. Hello, Emilio. That's what happens when you raise your cats right. Isn't it? Mm hmm? Little fuzzball. <sighs> Carlton. I'm going to have to put you down uh, on the floor, okay? Yes, I'm going to be putting you on the floor. <laughs> right. You'll get your snuggle time later after the show, all right? Come on, little buddy. There you go. Gee, what a shock. Okay, today's show is a Patreon sculpt, yes, um, and in addition we will be having to do a bit more sculpting, a bit more uh, prop making than usual, so uh, I'm probably going to go ahead and start here in just a second since the patrons right over here. Meanwhile... As most of you know by now, the Titans got funded. Um, I've also got a Tarask that is finished and for sale. And down here, you'll find on Gumroad, it's, a, it's, it's for selling files, I have the Tarask and the individual and collected versions of the Titans. Those who have backed the Kickstarter will be receiving coupon codes. So they would go to the Gumroad, they would place it into their, place what they had ordered into their cart, and then put in the coupon code, and bang, they get it. Okay. And also, for those of you who are watching after the fact on YouTube, don't forget the whole like, subscribe, bell icon thing, and any cubic photon is like magic for minis. Last Thursday I did a uh, Cyclops. I'm in the middle of prepping it for some little demonstration photographs. As you can see, what I did was I painted it gray. I gave it a coat of Nuln Oil, which is the, the very dark wash from Games Workshop. And then gave it a dry brushing of light gray. It's really, you know, picks out the details and shows what's there and what's not. Like those ears are nicely detailed. The fingernails came out and the toenails came out. Including the really nasty big toe toenails. So, you know, I mean, the, the seams are pretty cool and the threads, you can see them. So, yeah. Anyway, Ugh. Ugh, excuse me, <laughs> I can't wait to see what that Tarask ends up looking like painted. And uh, are you going to go for the, uh, the, the official rust red, orangey brown shades, or are you going to give it an interesting paint job? You know, 
Always good, Citrine. Excuse me. Didn't mean that. But yeah, what we're going to do is um, we're going to be doing a... Well, apparently he's a Ranger multiclass. Which basically means he's a nature guardian in general. So what we're going to do is we're going to make... he has He's, he's carrying a pair of uh, unique weapons. And he's got a bow on his back. So we're going to be making the, the bits and pieces for him because his bow is unique and his uh, weapons are unique. <coughs> Excuse me. But, uh, that reminds me, you said, Emilio, you said that, uh, his bow was a dragon horn bow, or something like that. Um, let's see, you said it was a bow made with a dragon forearm. Okay, um, what exactly does that mean? Oh no. Mm. Yeah. Looks like YouTube's having issues again. Yay. Last time this happened, it split the episode up into two different versions. Okay, now, the bow. Is it a short bow? Long bow? Recurve? Is it a self bow, which means it's basically just a long, straight thing, and it would just kind of look a little bony? Is it two equal bones coming out from the, from the center grip? You know, things like that. In case you're wondering what I'm looking at, when I'm looking, over, I'm looking at the uh, the uh, chat. <clears throat> Notice that it only came out this nostril for the most part. Yeah. And anyway, I'm going to go ahead and we're going to pop over, while we're waiting on, on Emilia to, to, uh, to explain, we're going to pop over to 3 Studio Max. This is the raw geometry for the human figure, the human male figure. Let me go ahead and hidden line so you can only see the front and the as you can see yes I did put, give it a little bit higher density in the waist area than I really should have but oh well but yeah this is my raw geometry Now, his primary weapon, one that's going to be in his hands, is, um, it's a weapon I'm not a huge fan of, I hate to say, because, I mean, even most fantasy weapons are still representations of a real thing. This is something that I find kind of, well, more than kind of, pretty ridiculous. And it's basically a double-ended scimitar, light scimitar. Okay, let me pull it back a little bit more than that, and a little bit taller. I wish it was a little bit taller. Do, 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 do. 
And let's make it 10 sides, two cap segments, and one height segment. This is just the handle. This is everything else is going to be built around this. Now let me double check on the placement of this by importing one of my previous weapons. Props. Old. Let's go. Well, let's do it by date modified. It'd be easier. Let's go with the Viking sword because we need something that's symmetrical so that it's it's the uh, centered area is centered in fact okay 13.228 this is at 13.227 so we need to change that to 37 and then 228 i have a there's a minor flaw in the version of 3d studio max that i have okay the other one is good and that's that uh i cannot change a an x y or z by 0 0.001 I have to change it by 0 .002 or more. So anyway, that's the uh, the handle for this particular weapon. Actually, let's go ahead just to make it a little bit easier to make sure it's going to blend better. We're going to connect, give it two connections, and we're going to make them bulge a bit. Then we're going to select and loop here, chamfer. Point zero zero one. The reason we're doing that chamfer there is so that when we smooth this, it'll still be a sharp edge. Now, normally, I just delete the ends of that tube, but it's going to be brought into ZBrush and given a DynaMesh, and I want to make sure that the cap on this tube DynaMesh is where I want it, not where ZBrush randomly puts it. So we've got one, two levels of mesh smooth. We have our slightly bulgy handle. Collapse all. Excuse me, I got hiccups. Okay, so next is going to be the actual blade. Now, this blade is going to be slightly curved, not horribly so. So, what we're going to do is we're going to start with a box. And we're going to make it narrow. Well, not so much narrow as width of the overall blade. Okay, we need to make this a little bit thicker that way. A little bit thicker that way. Okay. Now we're going to bring it out to about there. Okay. And then just to make sure we have it right, this is also, also at negative 13.227 and 15.999. Now, we need to move it so that it's just barely in touch with the end right there. Or I'll, actually, let's make it a little bit narrower because we're going to be adding on... Oh, wrong way. We're going to be adding on the edge, extruding it out. Now, height segments, we're going to give it three. Now, let's make it five. Edible poly? Okay. Now, I'm popping back into this so I can look at the reference picture, because it's not something I necessarily it's the reference image was basically made up of multiple different images combined oh no more drop yeah anyway the reference picture was made from several different images combined so I don't want to risk anything with uh, copyright issues and the character's name is apparently alright let's see Okay, I'll say this. I don't think I'll be able to get it quite as de quite as detailed as what you've got, but I'm going to see what I can do. All right. 
the blade actually needs to come out from the handle a little bit now. Okay, so let's pull this out. And we're then going to take this and pull it that way. I'm also going to take these and pull it or these and pull them back a little. Then Alright, so we're going to start here, deselect those, we're going to extrude it out just a little, I said just a little, and then take this and pull it that way, then we're going to grab this and pull it, actually no, what we need to do is we need to then Select here, ring, and connect it with one connection point. Then, take, take this and pull it back. I'm also going to kind of pull it forward a bit there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to select here. We're going to extrude it out a little. Let's make it there. And then we're going to shrink it on the on the front to back to there. The reason for that is because of the shape of the uh, blade. Now We're going to deselect these. This is going to be the actual edge of the blade. And we're going to make sure this is coming out as a local normal. And then we've got to grab these points and pull them out. Now. This is at an X of 10.858, so we need to put this at an X of negative 10.858 to make sure it stays nice and even. And then this one comes down to there. Okay, then we're going to select the edges of the blade itself and this point right here. We're going to make it about 2% high, because that'll give us an edge. The blade's a little thick now, so let's go ahead and select it, the whole thing, and narrow. Oh, let's do it this way, so we're moving it from the center. There we go. And then we're going to reset transform And now we're going to taper it a little. Just a little. We're going to use... Let's see. I, okay, we need to go that way. Just a little. Collapse all. And then we're going to bend. Just a bit, a nice, a light curve is what was requested. Collapse all. And now what we're going to do is we're going to select the edges we want to be sharp. If 
By that, I mean hard, rigid edges. Yeah. Alright, now. Let's hit Z to get them all in. And just to show you the effect of what this happens, we're going to smooth the whole thing. Now you notice how all of a sudden those it looks soft and kind of pillowy. Well, once we change that chamfer to point zero zero one, we're getting a lot of those harder edges back. Also, right here, we're going to weld it back. Alright, so what we're going to do is... And now we better not. Okay. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to select right here. Connect. To there. And then select here. Okay. And then we mesh smooth. No, I don't think so. I know what needs to happen. Weld. Okay, there we go. Alright, now let's see what happens. Yeah, there we go. I like giving it more of a curve here at the base of that edge. Collapse all. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to select that handle, attach this blade, then, we're going to select the blade and detach it. What that did was it gave us a, our, gave our blade the same, oh. I'm an idiot. In fact, pivot center to object first. Then, attach the blade and detach the blade. What that does, that moves the blade's pivot point to the same point as the handle. And now I mirror it. Copy. Alright, so this one needs to reset and normal, normalize. And looking at it, both of them might be a little too long for what you're look he's looking for. So what we're going to do is we're going to shorten them this way and then shorten it this way giving us still a little bit of room for the handle once we're, this is all done you know we I mean if you look at it that's still almost as long as he is tall. In fact, it's longer than he is tall. Okay. So what we're going to do... This one is... Back to here. We're going to bring it a little bit closer to the handle. Delete this one. And we're going to do our mirror bit again. And normalize. Collapse all. attach to this and let's give it just a little bit 
of uh, a little bit like that. Then we're going to unbend it. Just a little. Yeah, there we go. Collapse all. Now, next piece is we need the guards. And let me go ahead and. Okay. It's collapsing again. And we're trying to keep it, keep up with what's going on, but apparently YouTube is not behaving. So what we're going to do now, we're going to just select these, connect them with two connection points, and those two connection points are going to be about as wide apart as the blade. Now, mesh smooth. There we go. And I'm going to need to kind of
make them a bit make it a bit uh, thicker And then I'm going to taper this. There we go. That's what I wanted to do with it. And then I'm going to attach and mirror. There we go. Okay, now the last thing that we're going to add on... Actually, I think it would work better and be less likely to get me in legal trouble if we did not put the buckler on the back of these weapons. Most of the detailing is going to be done in ZBrush. We're going to attach both of these change the whole thing to blue because yeah now the last thing to do is we got to get this at the right angle which is whoop there which is 45 degrees Is that about the right size for what you want? Emilio? Okay. So then what we're going to do now is we're going to move the center, the joint center to zero X so that we can then mirror it over across the other way because he's dual wielding them we are also take this and we're going to reset and normalize now this one is going to be file export selected 3D Printing Home Meshes, Free Sculpt Minis, Patreon, New, Alaric, Wavefront, OBJ, Left, Glaive, Export, Done, and <coughs> File, Export Selected, Right, Glaive, Export, Done. The last thing we need to do is make his bow. I've got a quiver. And I'm going to actually... Um, we're going to the quiver right now. The back quiver is right here. I'm just going to export this so I can put it on, so I can place the bow in the right spot alongside the quiver. File. Export. Um, Patreon minis, new, Alaric, Quiv Plaque. Quiv Plaque. That means quiver placement. And just to get things ready, we're going to go ahead and load in the mail. Okay, so, back in here, file import. Patreon Minis, new Alaric Quiv Plaque. Okay. 
Would you rather have the bow to the left or the right of the quiver? And would you rather have the quiver angled like it is or straight up and down? Well, the, they're already, like, taller than he is. If, I, if you put them upright on the ground, the tips would be taller than his head. I assume you mean his left. So, for example, it would be here. If you can see the mouse. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and make the bow off to the side and then place it. Now, the way this is going to work is it's going to start off as a relative cylinder. Actually, no. Yeah, yeah it is. Double poly. Center. And then we're going to delete the bottom half. Now, what's going to happen is I'm going to put in one more edge right about... Oh, I was moving it sideways instead of just up. One more edge to about there. We're going to increase the size of it. Just a little. Then... We're going to extrude to about here, shrink it, and move it back a little. We're also going to select these vertexes and bring them in so that it's, yeah. Then, Let's see. We're going to need to come to about there. So not quite up to the next block. About two-thirds of the way towards the next block. Extrude. About there. Now, we're going to shrink these a bit. Select Connect. And then shrink these a bit more. And we're going to widen them. Let me hide the rest of this real quick. Hide unselected. We're going to make them wider simply because they we need to have a bow look and not a blade look we're then going to select these edges bring them oh don't need that bring them down that way these edges bring them down that way this edge bring it in and then these edges bring them in now what's going to happen is we're going to end up shaping this in ZBrush to be more bone like like it's two spurs of bone two joints that have been shaved down kind of crudely to make the bow. We're also going to take that and we're going to bring it to about there. Okay. 
No, it's smooth to one. Collapse all. We actually need to select these and make them a bit narrower. And then bring it in that. No. Take. Deselect this. Let's bring the whole thing out that way. Okay. Then what we're going to do is we're going to. Oh, let's take. Those make them a little narrower. Again, to emphasize the shape of the handle. And we're going to mirror, mirror it on the Y axis. Attach there. Select these vertexes and weld. 20 becomes 10. And then we're going to bend it. No, we don't want to mesh smooth it yet. We want to bend. Actually, hold on. Yeah, that'll do. That's, that'll do what I want it to. Okay, now bend. That's our basic bow shape right there. Collapse all. I'm going to smooth it. Because again, this will be sculpted to be kind of bone like and kind of crude and a little almost stony. Now we're going to. Okay. We're going to kind of pull it back and down a little. And then hold a little. Okay, how's that for the placement of your bow? I'm going to inflate it a little bit. It's a little thin. Uh, about there. Collapse all. I didn't lose again, did I? Am I still frozen? No, I'm not. Okay. So, how's that for the placement of your bow? Actually, I don't, because if you if you print it standing, that bottom half will have multiple supports auto-generated by most programs, as if it's tilted the other way, there'd be one thin tip that may get missed. This will probably be easier. I'm just going to go ahead and file export selected. I'm going to replace the quiv plaque with that. That sounds like a Klingon word, quiv plaque. Okay. Now, the last thing is you had some, you had a pauldron on your right arm in that drawing. Do you want that pauldron or not? I can do it in ZBrush. The problem with the pauldron is it's so sticky outy, it'll be a problem printing. We can make it a smaller pauldron, but as far as you have it in the picture, that'll be that will be a problem. Okay. Meanwhile, let's pop over to Dad Studio. And the first thing we're going to do is we're going to load in a pair of swords, just regular swords 
simply to have the hands take the right positions. Then import no there we go left glaive file import right glaive and file import quick plaque now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and we're going to move the quiver and we're going to parent it to the chest. We're then going to take the left glaive and parent it to the left hand. Right glaive, parent it to the right hand. So now, when he bends his chest, and I'm going to bend it unnaturally, everything follows. Hey look, it's a politician. And it's a lobbyist. Okay. Um, anyway. Now, we're going to hide those three props so that we can pose him. Oh, that's one other thing I forgot to do real quick. He's not a human. He's an elf. Okay. Base elf. Oh! Now pose. Hmm. Let me, let me see if I can remember how that pose was. A lot of times when I do my poses, what I'll do is I'll actually stand up and take the pose so I can see where I'm placing my weight and how I'm holding myself. Okay, so it's all right. Now, one thing about posing is that you never have your hips and your uh, shoulders parallel to each other or the ground at any angle. Okay, now we're going to bend this forward, twist it just a little, bend, we're going to twist it a bit more. Then we're going to bend that one back and side to side out a bit. Front view. Okay, grab that foot and bend it up. We're going to move this out of the way just long enough so that we can drop him to the ground and the actual foot will be on the ground. Yeah, that's almost perfect there. Alright, now let's unbend to about there. We're going to side to side the foot a little, and we're going to bend the toe up, and then twist it. Okay, we need to bend the foot back a little bit more. Not quite that much, because we're going to be bending the foot, the, yeah. There we go. Perspective view. Then we're going to twist the torso. Okay, also when I first made this head, I made it just a little large, so we're going to scale the head to 95%. Yeah. Now, the next thing is this arm. Come 
coming out a bit more. A little bit of a bend. Just to see. He's going to be turning his head in that direction. And he's losing his ear in his quiver. So we're going to move the neck away. Now this one will be bent, also bent up. And we're going to need the glaive in place for this. And we're going to bend. the forearm here and right now as we can see right now he's tilted forward so we're gonna have to grab that abdomen and bend backwards a little so that he's moderately balanced yeah there we go next thing is we're gonna grab this one this is the shin we're gonna lock it side to side grab the foot and we're gonna kind of pull it that way Also, that's bent too far back. Okay. How's that for his pose? Okay, quiver not be as wide. Um... What I can do is the following. No, not that. That. Okay. Now we selection. Select by. Select geometry islands. No. Selection. Select connected. That was it. Okay. And then, geometry editing, uh, delete selected polygons, yes. I'm going to do the same thing. Okay. Going back into content library, we have the quiver as a separate piece that auto loads in. And what we can do then is select that quiver. And we're going to have to shrink the whole thing. How about to there? We're also going to bring it this way just a bit. How's that? There's a little gray line here. That's the ground. You can see this puts on it. And the toe is on it. His heel is off the ground. Okay, now let me check something here. I'm going to have to come back here so I can check the image. Okay, there's one other thing we're going to need to make for him. Or add to him, rather. Um, and that's going to be... We're going to hide the glaive so I can make sure I'm doing some of this bit. 
Content library clothing. Tunic skirt. Okay. That's going to be what we're going to be basing a lot of this on. Um, okay. Tunic skirt. Let's open up from the hip. And then let's see. The right thigh on him twists negative 31.48. So this right thigh needs to twist positive 31.48. Left thigh on the figure is twisting negative 0.19. Not a lot, but it's an, it's yeah you know, every little bit. Okay, now the hair we're gonna do on the sculpt or when we sculpt. And so what we're gonna do is we the last thing to do is we need to load in a base. Now, have you seen the bases that I've got? Let's start with the old ones. Mm -hmm. These are the old bases. And these are the new ones. New ones give me a little bit more space on the screen. Obviously, I don't think you want him standing on a metal grate or, a, or, or you know, things like that. But, you know, there's... All sorts of places we can... Uh, <clears throat> what are you doing, Furball? Carlton wants to help you choose a base. Don't you? Can I put you down on the floor? Yeah, look how big those claws are. Carlton, I'm trying to get some... I'm trying to do a broad here, do you mind? Nah. No. Ah! No, fuzz butt. Ah! No! Yeah. Down, little fuzz. Rocky or dirt style? Well, the middle one on this row is supposed to be gravel. The one to the right is cracked earth. That one is supposed to be like an asteroid or, or planetoid. And then we've got on the far left, down on this bottom, just raw rock. So we have Riverstone Gravel, we've got uh, Cracked Earth, we've got Planetoid, and we've got Raw Rock. Grass? Okay, so like the second one from my finger. The first one I'm touching right here is science fiction panels, but the, the second one there is grassy. If you want the grassy. Okay, file, import, bases, base grassy. And then what I do, I go to the front, 
and I make sure to bring it down to a level where he's stepping in the grass and blending with it. Okay, and then from the top view, you can see that, oh, he's standing kind of far apart. Yeah, that's not going to be very attached. Alright, so that means we're going to have to change our pose a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're simply going to bend the leg, this calf, a little bit more. And bend the foot up a little bit more. Then we're going to bring the leg, this leg, down. Okay, did that work? Yeah, he's more attached now. But wait a minute, he doesn't look... Did I accidentally scale him? The base doesn't look doesn't look as large as, as it usually does. And let's do this. Let's grab him. And let's move it. There. Actually, we need to kind of move forward a little. Because I'm used to having a lot more room on that ba on those bases. All right, how about this? We got it. Let's pin the translation and rotation. Grab this. Pin translation and rotation. Grab the hip. Oh, wait. Let's uh, make sure we lock the side to side. Okay. And now we need to kind of move it back this way. And then we can take this and move it back like that. And then grab this foot. Move it back like that. Okay. Now let's double check how he looks. Okay, we need to do one more thing. Select that hip. Need to pull him forward just a little bit. And down just a little bit. Behind the glaives. And the back props and the tunic and the base. Okay. Make sure I got that head adjusted yeah I'll export body except make him invisible glaive one glaive two file export glaives except and File, export, quit plaque! And then, file, export, kilt. Accept. And base grassy. File, export, base. Accept. 
Whee! And that took an hour to make two the three weapons and get him into that pose. Took an hour. That's a little bit longer than I normally take, but oh well. So now we take it to ZBrush. Yay! Import. No, not the horde. Patreon minis. New Alaric body comes first. Okay, then import. Kilt. Oh, no, 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 not import. I forgot. Tool. Append Polymesh 3D. Import. Kilt. And append Polymesh 3D. Import. Glaives. Append Polymesh 3D. Import. Quiv Flack. And append Polymesh 3D. Import. Base. And here we have the current status of the figure. So, what we're going to do is the first thing that I need to do is turn off the extra bits here. Uh, I need to go ahead and subdivide that kilt a little bit better. A lot better. And while I'm looking at it, is there anything you want done to the face besides closing his mouth do you want a stronger jawline a longer chin anything else done besides closing his mouth any expression that you want Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to subdivide this a couple times. And then we're going to tweak the positioning of the top edge of the tunic. Because it's going to be blended into our figure. because that's the waistline and he's wearing a one-piece item he's wearing a one-piece it is by Lauren Polo and it is made of lacra spandex oh wait no it is not it is made of dragon spandex okay there we go yes we're also going to grab the front center of this. And then shift the focal shift. And pull the front center down. Because there will be a bit in the front center. Kind of dangling a bit. Alright, now what we do is we take the, the, the body. And we go to the merge. Merge down, yes we want to always okay. And now, under Dynamesh, we go to 768. This is Dorfan Zebrush. Shrink the mouse. Now I'm using, let's shift, focal shift back to zero. Now I'm using the regular mouse here, not my tablet, because we want this 100% smoothed out. And it, you get, always get 100% always on with the mouse. You don't with the tablet. Okay, and then we're going to do the same thing back here. In fact, just to make sure, we're going to 
tap the number one key because that repeats the last stroke. Now I should note that's the last stroke. For some reason I move, I hit one, it repeats that. We're also going to do smooth back here because when I stretched that down, I, I really stretched out the polygons involved. Okay, frame. We're going to sculpt on him before we even think about sculpting on anything else. Um, we're going to start off. Oh, well, I've got. Well, I'm thinking about it. We're also going to smooth out that center neck. Yeah, there we go. All right. What's going to happen next is we're going to be drawing on the edges of the sleeve and uh, neckline. And for that, uh, we're breaking out the tablet. Wake up. And at this point, I don't expect any more kitty interruptions because they know that when I'm using the tablet, they don't do that. And this one's, of course, sound asleep. I think the other two are also. Anyway. So. Let me go ahead and smooth this real quick. Okay. It's going to come down from this shoulder. And around. And it's going to come down under the arm. Now we're not going to do the whole thing because we're going to do with this how this kilt part was handled. We're going to once we've extracted it out we're going to blend it in but only on the areas that are actually touching the touching the body or coming out from the rest of the outfit rather. Okay, and then... Okay, now... Let's go ahead and sharpen the edge of the sleeve. bit more precise yeah now we are going to under subtool extract and we want this 0.02 that's about ideal size for giving us clothing edges except then we draw to get rid of that masking go back to him and draw to get rid of his masking and under geometry we're going to sub dynamesh at 256 now before we do anything else, while it's still moderately low poly, and then smooth out the bottom of this. Okay. And then we're going to subdivide it a couple times till it's around there. We're going to back up to him and merge down. Go back to geometry. Now since Dynamesh is lit up right here, all we have to do is hold control and draw a square. That'll read Dynamesh and oh look there's our scene. Now once again we're gonna go over it like this. I'm gonna hit number one a couple times just to make sure it's all smooth. 
and then up here. And then down here real quick. So now it's clear that he's wearing something akin to that. Okay. Now what we're going to do we're going to our seam brush. I'm going to double check with something on the picture real quick. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. And here, what we're going to do is we're going to draw this little portion here. Let me double check on which way to do it. Yeah, like that. Okay. We're going to make it a little bit bigger and a lot more intense. And we're going to basically follow this up to there. Oh, wrong way. Okay, I'm going to make it a little bit bigger and a lot more intense. We're going to start from here. We're going to come up like that. This is going to end up being under the under the belt, but oh well. And there, as you can see, it's a separate piece of cloth hanging over what will be his actual kilt kilt. Ain't nobody killed me yet! And just for the sake of it, we're going to draw on a little separator. It's not really ever actually going to get called on. But anyway, that's the kilt uh, and the front piece. We're going to shrink it now. And... Draw. That's too big. Just work it now and draw on the belt. The belt will be just above. Whoop. Right there. Okay. Now we go to Subtool, and we're going to extract this. He's not going to have a regular buckle. Also, we're not going to use the same usual way to reduce the... the uh, instead of using Dynamesh... Well, first let me make sure I've got the right thing selected. Instead of using Dynamesh, we're going to be using z -remesher. The reason being is because we want that shape but we want it simplified okay now we're going to smooth it Do lower he has a belt buckle that is unique that is very unique um you called it a dragon skull belt buckle but it didn't look like a skull it's more like a dragon head But anyway, before we get to dealing with his buckle, we got to add on his other pauldron. And that pauldron is going to be pretty darn pointy. from here back to there mm. 
as I said before, it's like the difference between a rattle can and an airbrush. And let's blend that. We're not blend. It. Mark that. And we're going to extract this at point zero three. Draw to get rid of it. Draw there. And I'm going to grab move and make it really big. Or not that big. About there. We're going to grab the front, the edge of this. Oh. And we're going to kind of move it forward and up so it's slightly over there. I really should have made this then we're going to shrink it a little bit bigger grab the grab the front center and move it up and out and then make it smaller grab here and straighten this up here. Now, we're going to do Z remesh this. <clears throat> and subdivide it a couple. Now in here, it's time to make the strap. We're going to turn on transparency and draw on, whoop. Draw this on, oh, it's too big. So we need to make it, this one's narrower, so we need to base it off of this one. Okay. And go under. Turn off transparency. And this is going to extract at point zero 0.02. Accept. Now we're going to give it a, we're going to Z remesh it and then we're going to give it a belt buckle. So we're going to stick it in the middle and we're going to drag down. Oh, I forgot. The depth is set to the wrong amount. Zero. There we go. Just draw down until it's as wide as the belt. There we go. And then to move topological. Make this bigger. Pull it in. Then we're going to split unmasked parts. Because we need to subdivide it a couple times before we can blend it with the strap. And there we go. Merge down, down. What? 
the heck? And coincidentally, that strap also goes towards that. Okay. Now, frame out. Okay. So it is a skull or a head? Because the picture you sent me looks more like a head. Ahead. Okay. Well, before we get to it, let's go ahead. We're going to add on his boots. I'm assuming that the way you're describing the boots, you want them to be more like knee-high moccasins rather than bucklery boots. Am I correct? Yeah, but how long? And do you want them to be, like, knee-high? Do you want them to have a cuff? No cuff? Laces up the front? Because long boots is a broad spectrum. Okay, let me pop back to here so I can look at the picture. Oh, okay. So, thigh-high boots. Do they have the knee cops that you have in the picture? Well, to the knee, those things look like they go almost to the crotch. Do you have the the armor on the knee that he has?
Well, I've already got the basic shape of the boots masked off. So, I'm going to go ahead and just make those basic shape, basic boot shapes, then I'll do the buckle. Oh, hell. Yeah, I messed that up. Okay, there we go. Okay. Don't worry, we're gonna do to the bottom of these boots what we did to most of the rest of the clothing. Okay, so we need to be here. Undo that sharpening. And we need to make his buckle. So, we're gonna turn on transparency. And we're gonna start off by making like the back of the skull. Whoop. Actually, no, we need to start off by increasing the geometry. It's only at 500,000. Divide, delete lower. There we go. Let's close this. Shrink the mouse, and we're going to make kind of an oval shape here. This is going to be the core of the skull. We're going to add on the rest as a bit to make it layered and look more like a jewelry. Now we go to geometry. This is going to be Z uh, be dynameshed at 64. So that we can smooth it out a good bit. And round it off. Then, I'm going to deformation and inflate it a little. Again, to round it off. Geometry, divide. Then, back to him. transparency. Now what we're going to do, we're going to draw on, oh let's turn off the belt because we don't need the belt anymore. We're going to draw on a bit that comes down and around like the horns on a dragon. And again, we're going to be sculpting on this, so this isn't the final look for the item. Geometry. I'm shooting 28. And then we're going to smooth out the ends of this, and the side and front, but not the back. Now, Go to regular move. And we're going to pull this up. And these horns are pulling around and back.
Okay. <clears throat> then we're going to subdivide it and start sculpting on it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to use a clay build-up brush with the round alpha. Pick my head in chat. Okay, now. Shrink this down. We're going to kind of pull it. Actually, no, we don't want to do that. We want to kind of just pull it down sideways to represent the grooves in the horns. Okay, and then... And then we're going to use slash. <clears throat> Excuse me. To sculpt on the eyes. Now we're going to get back to move. I'm going to pull this out and push this back in. Okay, are there gemstones on it? Like, is it studded with stones or something? Also, let me go ahead and do one thing. Go to Subtool. Merge down. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use the uh, a moderately intense inflate and a small brush. We're going to draw on like little gold accent seams. border around the base of the skull.
No, it didn't come out right. Once again, to emphasize the fact that this is jewelry and not a skull. You didn't go except draw. Draw. Geometry. I will be honest, there is one thing that's going to have to wait till after the show. Simply because of time it's taking. And that's separating the arms. I also would not suggest separating this uh, right arm. Like we discussed. Because it would only be able to fit in one direction because of the way that the pauldron is shaped. Okay. Now, I'm going to come from here. Come down like that. And then erase out that. And do the same thing back here. And then I'm gonna come and do this do a okay. And then we're going to extract that at 0 0.02, no, 0 0.015. Accept, draw. And then on the pauldron here, we're going to add in a gemstone. it a couple times and then let's blend these uh, or merge these pauldron pieces frame mm. 
Okay. Ugh. While I'm waiting on that answer, we're going to add on the pauldrons. Or the, the not pauldrons, the uh, bracer. There we go. I'm going to add on the, the these. Okay, now what we're going to do is we're going to add on, we're going to use standard brush, drag dot, with a sharp, kind of a sharp alpha. Shrink it down a good and make it pretty hefty. And turn off the dag gum lazy mouse. No. Let's try it at a hundred. Trying to find a good. Let's try this. Yeah, there we go. That's almost perfect. For the fangs on the back of the bracer. Okay, so he has knee cops too, huh? All right. This very likely, um, hmm. Looking at the picture of the bracer, what I can see. Okay. We're going to have to add back of the hand. We're going to have to add on some wrinkly bits to make it look like leather. Okay. Yeah, it's already 255. So. This is, we got a lot left to do. We got the knee cops. We got the rest of the boot. We've got... 
Oh, we got a lot. Let's go ahead and bring everything back for right now. This is our current state. He's probably about half done. Okay. Ugh. What I'm doing now is... I am, first of all, getting my feet up into here. And then I'm going up, instead of import or export, I'm using save as. This saves the tool itself with all of the subtools as separate subtools, I don't think it saves the undo feature. So, what we're going to do, we're going to go ahead and call it for right now. Not, not, not complete, not total. And we're going to continue this at the later. Actually, right now, I'm thinking it'd probably be better to print them in one piece. But that's just me. Anyway. Oh, go figure. Just to show you what I mean by, this is his current state. That's his spikes on this bracer. I haven't gotten the bracer actually detailed. I've added some trim to the pauldron. We've got the dragon skull buckle. And we've still got a lot to do. We haven't even started detailing the swords or, or the, the glaives or the bow yet, let alone adding in some bits and pieces to the, to the, uh, to the quiver. Do you, what are you doing? Ah. Get, let go of the shirt. <sighs> Go figure. Yeah. Anyway. So, I... Hello! Do you, do you mind? I'm trying to, I'm trying to log off for this afternoon. <sighs> and hello. Yeah, I'm sitting here trying to deal with an over, over affectionate cat. And I'm trying to log off. You see what I mean? Over affectionate. Anyway, let me go, Fuzzbutt. Let me ha let me log off, Fuzzball. Okay. All right. I'm putting you down on the floor for now. In about ten minutes, you can get back up here. Go. Go. Shoo. Okay. Yeah, just missed me. Uh, actually, we're only halfway through today's sculpt. Part two is it in five hours, because this was a rather complex, detailed sculpt we're working on with a lot of original geometry needed. So, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to be shutting down and taking a, <laughs> taking a nap, and then coming back, and we'll continue this evening. All right, so, no fuzzbutt. Yes, the claws are sharp, but he has amazing control over them. He can grab my shirt without touching my skin. All right, so we have my hand here. Um, get some soda real quick because my throat's starting to get dry. Okay. Now, that's going to be five, four, three, two, and one. 
I wonder how many people have hurt themselves trying to use their prop war glaives. Bye-bye.